History is rich with documents that provide insight into the thoughts of great minds, but few are as poignant as the last words left by a young prodigy. Everest Galois, on the eve of a tragic end, penned what many consider one of the most emotional personal testaments in the history of science. My good friends, remember me, for fate has not granted me a life long enough for my country to remember me. Goodbye. What has kept me alive is the public good. My life ends as a result of a tragic slander. These were some of the last words of Évariste de Galois, a young man whose ideas defied time and whose life ended tragically before his 21st birthday. What did Galois discover that was so revolutionary? How could someone so young leave such a profound legacy? What made him known as the greatest genius we never had? Today, we will find out. Évariste Galois, born on October 25, 1811, in post-revolutionary France, began his education under the careful tutelage of his mother. A learned and deeply religious woman, she was his first teacher, imparting not only basic literacy and arithmetic, but also instilling a strong foundation in classical and religious studies. These early lessons not only laid the groundwork for his knowledge, but also set the stage for his future ideological battles. At 12, his homeschooling gave way to the demands of school life in Paris. Galois entered a school known for its strict discipline, which, ironically, became a battleground for his growing intellectual and personal restlessness. Despite an uninspiring environment, he displayed an unusual aptitude in subjects like Latin, Greek, and rhetoric. Although he was recognized, he faced restrictions. The school principal considered him too young for more advanced courses like rhetoric, which he was already attending. Descriptions like original, bizarre, and a singular student were often attached to him in school reports. It was during this period that Galois discovered his true passion, mathematics. Legend has it that he devoured Legendre's treatise on geometry, a dense volume meant for a two-year course, in just two days. Although possibly exaggerated, this feat highlights the depth and speed of his intellect. But it was the rigidity of the school environment that paradoxically catalyzed his departure from educational formalities and propelled him into a self-taught journey in mathematics. This period of mathematical discovery, however, was not without conflicts. While he excelled in subjects of interest, Galois often found himself at odds with the school administration. His aversion to conformity and his questioning spirit were seen as rebellious, not as signs of genius by a system that valued order over innovation. This conflict between the young mathematician and established power structures not only shaped his character, but also delineated the path he would eventually take, marked by both revolutionary discoveries and challenging confrontations. As Galois progressed in the study of mathematics, he was not just learning, but fundamentally transforming the discipline. A particular challenge caught his attention, fifth degree equations. The question was not whether such equations had solutions, as mathematicians like the Norwegian Niels Henrik Abel and the Italian Paolo Ruffini had already shown that there are no general solutions using conventional algebraic methods. Abel, whose short life was also marked by genius and an untimely death, left a legacy of unanswered questions. Inspired by this legacy, Galois sought to understand the deep reasons, the essence of these equations. To explain his approach, Imagine a puzzle game. Each puzzle piece plays a unique role and contributes to the final picture. Galois proposed that solutions to equations could be understood through the symmetries and relationships between these pieces, which he called the elements of the Galois group. This theory not only provided a new way of understanding equations, but revolutionized how we think about algebra. However, Galois' contributions faced significant hurdles on the road to recognition. One such obstacle involved Augustin-Louis Cauchy, one of the most respected mathematicians of the time. Galois had submitted his groundbreaking papers to Cauchy for evaluation, hoping he would present them to the French Academy of Sciences. Unfortunately, for reasons ranging from oversight to neglect, Cauchy never submitted Galois' work. To make matters worse, after the untimely death of Joseph Fourier, the secretary of the academy, some of Galois' manuscripts that could have been recovered were lost forever. These episodes were not mere setbacks, but severe blows to Galois. However, he persisted. 
Each rejection, each challenge strengthened his resolve to continue exploring and deepening his ideas, which would later form the basis for modern mathematical and scientific theories. While Galois innovated in the field of mathematics, his life began to mirror the political upheavals of his time. Beyond the classrooms and academic studies, the streets of Paris were becoming stages for intense debates and struggles for social and political change. Galois' own frustrations with obstacles in his scientific career resonated with the growing revolutionary movements, pulling him into issues that went beyond theorems and equations. This mix of academic challenges and political involvement was leading Galois down a path where mathematics and activism intertwined. As he advanced in his theories, his personal life also became more complicated, setting the stage for a series of personal and political events that would shape the course of his story. Galois' life, as complex in its equations, was no less tumultuous in its personal and political context. After facing significant obstacles in his academic journey, he began to engage more deeply in the political agitations shaking France. This new arena was not just a reflection of his mathematical struggles, but an extension of them, where Galois saw a chance to apply his ideals of freedom and equality. His involvement became even more personal and painful with the tragic loss of his father. Amid unfounded accusations and a slanderous campaign, Galois' father, who was the mayor of Bourg-la-Reine, found himself embroiled in a fabricated political scandal. Unable to bear the pressure and dishonor, he committed suicide. This event was a devastating blow to Galois, who was already facing enormous challenges. His father's death not only deepened his grief, but also fueled his desire to fight against the injustices he saw around him. Galois' political life was fraught with dangers. He frequently found himself in the crosshairs of the authorities for his subversive activities. His participation in the society of the Friends of the People and his fiery speeches earned him the unwanted attention of the police. In 1831, during a demonstration organized to protest government injustices, Galois was arrested. This period behind bars was marked by bitter reflections on society and the role he should play in it. During his imprisonment, Galois faced moments of great despair. One drunken night, he attempted to take his own life, but was stopped by his cellmates. On another occasion, he confided to a friend that he believed he would die in a duel over a low-class seductress. These prophetic words reflected Galois' troubled state of mind. After being released from prison due to a cholera epidemic ravaging Paris, Galois was transferred to a rest home. There, he met Stephanie Dumotel, the daughter of the doctor responsible for the house. The letters exchanged between them show a young Galois hopeful and in love, but also disillusioned with what seemed to be an unrequited love. As Galois tried to balance his political passions and personal affections, his life became even more complicated. The continued rejection of his ideas by the academic community and the escalating political conflicts set the stage for an inevitable tragedy. With political events intensifying, Galois' frustrations grew. Each academic rejection and each political confrontation added more fuel to his determination and disillusionment. This cauldron of emotions and challenges was leading Galois to a breaking point where his passion for mathematics and his political convictions would inevitably clash with tragic consequences. In the spring of 1832, Galois' personal and political life reached its peak of tension. On the eve of his last and fateful day, Galois sat down at his work table, consumed by the urgency to get everything recorded, perhaps sensing that dawn would bring the end of his journey. Much of the events surrounding Galois' death remain a mystery. So I will try to stick to what is known to have happened, which is summarized in two letters that are, to this day, considered one of the most touching personal testaments in the history of science. The first says the following, I die a victim of an infamous flirt and the two idiots she involved. My life ends as a result of a miserable slander. Ah, to die over something so small, so contemptible, Heaven is my witness that only under duress, forced, did I yield to a provocation that I tried to avoid by all means. I regret having told a pernicious truth to men with such small capacity to hear it calmly, yet I told the truth. I take to the grave a conscience without lies, unstained by patriotic blood, 
Goodbye. What has kept me alive is the public good. Forgive those who kill me, they act in good faith. My friends, please, in my mother's name, ensure that I'm not presented in a ridiculous manner. It would be a disappointment that she could bear. The second letter had a more political tone and was addressed to his Republican comrades. Galois explained the circumstances that led to the duel, emphasizing that he acted against his will, forced by a code of honor that he could not ignore. The letter said, My good friends, I was provoked into a duel by two patriots. My refusal is impossible. I beg your forgiveness for not having informed any of you, but my opponents demanded for my honor that I inform no patriot. Your task is simple. Prove that I fought against my will. That is, after having exhausted all means of a conciliatory solution. Remember me, since fate has not granted me a life long enough for my country to remember me. So, in summary, Galois did something to, or with a girl, most likely Stephanie, that angered two Republicans close to the girl. In a discussion with Galois, they provoked a duel from which apparently he had no way to escape. On the morning of May 30th, 1832, Galois' tragic fate was sealed. The chosen location for the duel was an isolated field on the outskirts of Paris, a choice that reflected the desire for privacy and perhaps the gravity of the conflict. Details of that fatal encounter are scarce, but it is known that Galois and his opponent, a member of his own political faction, with whom he had personal disagreements, faced each other with pistols. When the shots echoed in the morning silence, Galois was severely wounded. Rushed to a hospital, Galois' last hours were marked by clear lucidity, interspersed with feverish deliriums. He spent this time making frantic notes in the margin of a book, trying to record his last mathematical ideas, a desperate attempt to solidify his legacy. Galois died on May 31, 1832, at the age of 20, not just as a brilliant mathematician, but also as a martyr for freedom. Galois died on May 31, 1832, at the age of 20, not just as a brilliant mathematician, but also as a martyr for freedom. Similarly, Abel died very young, without seeing all the brilliance his work would achieve. As mathematician Sophus Lie would say, it is particularly characteristic of mathematics that two of the deepest discoveries ever made were the work of two geometers, one of whom, Abel, was about 24 years old, and the other, Galois, had not reached 20. Emile Picard, another great mathematician, observing the mathematical advances of the 19th century, said, No one surpasses him in originality and depth of his conceptions. While learning about Galois' story, a question arose. Did he really have no other choice but to participate in that duel? Why didn't he flee? Did he not know the impact his ideas would have? Maybe he did. Maybe there was another option, but he chose not to follow it. Let's briefly review the events of Galois' life. Two unsuccessful attempts to enter the Polytechnic School. Three monographs rejected by the Academy. His father's suicide, imprisonment, and an unrequited love. How can someone like this be criticized for not having many expectations? After his death, Galois manuscripts were studied by mathematicians like Joseph Louville, who recognized his genius and worked to ensure that his theories were published and understood. Louville, along with others, saw the value of Galois' contributions and helped bring his work to light, ensuring that the world would not forget the young genius. Galois did not live to see the full acceptance of his ideas, but his work teaches us that true innovation often arises from resistance and challenge to established norms. His life and death are a powerful reminder that ideas can be more enduring than one's lifespan. Galois' story offers valuable lessons on persistence and passion. In a world where we often seek immediate recognition, Galois' trajectory reminds us that the true impact of our actions may not be immediate, but enduring. His commitment to mathematics, even in the face of immense challenges, teaches us the importance of pursuing our deepest interests with unwavering dedication. Applying this to modern life, we can see in Galois an example of how to face adversity with courage and continue to fight for what we believe to be true and just. His life, though brief, was marked by an intensity and purpose that transcended his circumstances. In a world filled with distractions and challenges, Galois' story is a beacon, guiding us to remain focused on our passions and to believe that our contributions can indeed 
make a difference, even if we may not immediately see their fruits. Galois, with his short and impactful life, teaches us that genius is not measured only by time, but by the depth with which we live our convictions and pursue our dreams. It's fascinating to imagine what Galois could have achieved had he lived longer. His contributions might have been even more profound, potentially transforming other areas of knowledge with his unique genius. A brilliant mind tragically cut short before realizing its full potential. And so, he remains known as the greatest genius we never had.